Hi, and appreciate your interest in the podcast. So, um, I've been listening to some podcasts, and uh, I got something pretty interesting, pretty amazing. So, um, I heard this podcast, and essentially, I'm guessing it's pretty recent, but there is the world's um, largest supercomputer, okay? Supercomputer is doing a linear um, ma- mathematics, right? Uh, it's doing calculations uh, using transistors, using ones and zeros. Easy to understand. And it made, it calculated this very complex problem in 30 minutes, right? Best supercomputer in the world. Then there is this, uh, it's called an adiabetic quantum computer, diabetic, meaning that it does not require heat <clears throat> to process uh, the information, uh, which makes sense because they, they're super cooled. Essentially, it did the same calculation that the world's best supercomputer did in 10 seconds. 10 seconds. It took 30 minutes, right? <clears throat> I don't know the number of qubits that wasn't mentioned uh, of this super, uh, quantum computer, but that is crazy. Um, so how does this happen? There's reasons why, right? This is why space and time, they're not needed to perform quantum calculations. These calculations actually, the, the, the problem, the parameters are sent to a higher dimension, the calculations are performed without space and time. The answer is created, and then the solution is presented back, um, it, back here, so to speak, right? Literally, really. Um, and so, space and time they're omitted by calculating in this higher dimension. This is what dawned on me, and I'm like, whoa, man. And it's this. This place where this... So, I'm going to put it like this now. You are thinking about whatever it is. Whatever, man. Whatever, right? This is amazing. And in order to think a thought truly, you have to bend space-time. You do. And so, you are going to get feedback if you don't have the answer. And that feedback comes from intuition. Okay? It seems like wherever these calculations are going is the same origin of intuition. That's amazing. Amazing! The caveat is we are self aware and we are sentient. Um, the quantum computer is has artificial intelligence. Big difference. Big difference. As far as I know, I mean, that's the contrast that I'm aware of. If you know something different, hey, let me know. But, um, yeah, I, that just dawned on me that this is... Because I forgot the name of the... the, um, the, uh, the there, there, There's this polygon or this... Geom- I don't know if it's polygon, I can't say that. It's a geometric shape that you cannot create in space-time. And essentially, it's the highest symmetry... Uh, that you can see, I guess, in in algebraic equations. Um, I'm going to have to go look it up now. And I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. Can I find it? No, don't think so. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it right now. But long story short, um, actually, let me see. Here we go. Here, I found it. It's called an amplitohedron. Amplitohedron. Wow. Say that a few times. Um, and so they say that's where all the other platonic shapes come from. Um, but yeah, I just think it's amazing that you can calculate something. You can think something, right? You're not really sure. And I think that people who are, you know, I'm just thinking out here, you know, people that are savants and you know, how do they know stuff? They're, they're, they're tapping into intuition is what they're doing. But, um, but this is the future more like modern day also of of computing and 
and I envision or I see um, countries down to cities down to whatever having these quantum supercomputers managing whatever right and and they're making decisions because they can look at a snapshot of five million people a billion people a hundred million people and then make a quantum calculation in seconds as far as um and then you know base things on predictive analysis whatever it is and so that's the beauty of or power of uh, quantum computing is the ability to to crunch that much information and then um, make a a uh, get get a, get an answer based on that information quickly. So yeah, um, it seems like this it is it's the origin. It has the same place as the origin of intuition. So what that's saying is it sounds like what. I think it even goes further. I think intuition is even higher than that. I, I because th these are realms or areas that we um, are exploring, and maybe there's you know secret budgets or programs, or whatever. And maybe they have higher information, you know, about this. Um, but I really feel like intuition even goes higher, um, and and this is kind of maybe the fringe of that. Of that higherness, of that um, higher level of uh, of um, of a dimension of a I don't know if you can call it a place, but uh, an awareness, I guess. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that that that's how this quantum computer worked. That's what it did. Um, it doesn't use space and time to do the calculations, um, and they're they are omitted because it's in a higher dimension. And this is very similar to intuition. Hope you like it. Thanks. Bye.